So my question is more of a basic process question. Um, I want to start doing more auditions and I want to get better at it. So when you get a script, how do you approach it? Do you read it out loud just to get it out of your mouth? Do you read it in your head? Do you do a few takes and then go back, listen to it and kind of self-direct yourself and make adjustments? What's efficient for you, I guess? And I know everyone's different, but since you've been doing it a while. <laughs> That's a great question. I love this topic. Um, do you mind if we source the group and see what everybody's approaches yeah, are? Great. Yeah. Definitely yeah. So how how do you all approach auditions? And so you're saying you want to get more efficient at it. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to do more auditions per day or take right. less time right. for Instead audition. Taking, yeah, <laughs> getting one done a day. Yeah. <laughs> we could pick it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say, starting off, that it gets faster the more you do it. And regardless of what your process is, you'll get more efficient at it just by nature of practicing that. You know, regardless of what your uh, what your process is, just the more you do it, you get faster. But I, I'd love to hear also what different people's processes are. If you're more of a rip and read person, you just grab the script and read it once and that's it. Or if you labor over it for, you know, days as if we had the luxury of days so I want to point out because I think you're both right I and I appreciate you mentioning that you know Sion talking about being authentic in that first read and then Barbie it it coming together quicker um, but I think it's also really important to point out that that is something that happens after you've already had some training so if you're brand new don't think that you can look at a script and just be authentic uh, because there are some things that you need to know beforehand. Um, you know, just like some technique things, timing things, you know, just <clears throat> genre things that probably, you know, you don't even realize you're doing. After you've been doing voiceover for a while, a lot of that stuff just happens so naturally that you go, oh, I'm just doing this on the first take when subconsciously there's a lot of stuff that's happening because you've already had that training and gone through it. Um, when I do my voice evaluation classes, that's something that I, um, I talk about a lot because um, w people who haven't had any training at all, um, and I can just hear, you can you can very much hear the difference between someone who is, um, you know, there there are kind of neuro pathways that are firing, so to speak, with just automatically versus someone who has who's thinking about every single syllable. Um, and doesn't know what they don't know yet. So you learn those things. It's kind of a, it's a painstaking process, like Barbie was saying with like learning tennis. And then once you've gone through that process and it's become kind of second nature, then absolutely there are things that kind of click in. And I think that it, it there are, uh, there's kind of like a roller coaster of that that happens over time. So you, you uh, learn a bunch of skills and it becomes second nature. And then uh, it kind of becomes easy and you kind of snap in, but then you start learning new things. And so it gets harder for a while. Uh, and then those things, you know, snap in and you start to learn new things. So uh, whether that's taking other classes and learning different um, techniques, or if that's learning different genres and adding on to what you already know. So there's kind of this uh, roller coaster thing that happens. But does, does anyone else have uh, other thoughts on process? There's one uh, animation um, he's an amazing animation coach and just voice actor. And he talks about his process where he, he goes in and I just, it feels so luxurious because like you, he doesn't have any children in the house. I could tell by his process. He was like, I, I get my script and, you know, I, I read it through and then I set it down and I walk away for a little bit. And then I come back and I read it through again. Then I would take a stroll around my property. And then I come back into my booth and it's like this process. I'm like, that would never work. I'm glad that works for him. Um, but Wait, I would say um, the, yeah, my, my biggest, um, you know, I guess, encouragement for efficiency. Stop. <laughs> Thanks. Um, would just be to, to audition more. Um, because there are, there are a lot of different techniques you can use I uh taken a class with Rick Wasserman and he has this whole thing that that he does and then if you were in the John McKinney training he talks about you know his concepts and and things like that 
Um, and so I think, you know, for me, what I do now is I do uh, try to think more conceptually. So I try to picture the entire commercial. And, uh, you know, if it's a TV commercial, I'm thinking about the music, uh, the visuals, and taking into account what the brand is, um, you know, <clears throat> who the audience is, how that's going to affect what the voiceover sounds like, uh, what, you know, what the purpose that the voiceover is serving, what happened right before, what's happening after, um, the whole setup and payoff thing that John talked about, which is huge. Um, and every every line and word having a purpose. So I'm thinking more conceptually and and then I'll go through and and kind of almost like a puzzle kind of um, think about where each line fits in. And sometimes it happens on a first read. Sometimes I get it immediately. I'm like, oh, I've either I've either seen this commercial before or I get it. I understand exactly what the big idea is and what the um, what the writer was going for when they wrote it. And so then it's easier to kind of just let that happen. And then other times it's it's more of a puzzle or sometimes there's that odd line that just doesn't fit in. I'm like, how am I supposed to say that? And so um, in those cases, I have to, it's, it's the whole as if thing. Uh, how would I say this as if that is a natural thing that would come here? Or what's the, what's the backstory that would make that line make sense? Uh, what's the personality trait of this person that makes it so that that's actually a, you know, a line that they would say. So um, I would say for me, it starts with the big picture concept and then the rest of it, hopefully it's nice when it all kind of fills in naturally. Um, but then sometimes I might need to take it line by line, or at least there might be an odd line out that I need to think about where, how does that fit in? And then um, it is really helpful to listen back. I might record it completely and be like, okay, I'm, I'm done. And then I go back and listen back to it. And as I'm listening back, sometimes I'll hear what the next line should sound like before, you know, like I hear my opening and then I know what it should sound like. And I know I didn't do that when I recorded it. So I'll stop it right then and then do that second line the way that it should have been. And, and so a lot of times my final um, auditions that I'm submitting are Frankenstein together. So I've, you know, record the first part is from my very first take. And then the last part's from the third take. Or maybe I only recorded that second line, you know, on my second take. So I just plug that in. And so it becomes kind of a, a Frankenstein um, audition. But that's that's how I approach them right now. If you'd have asked me a year or two ago, it'd be a little bit different. So it, it you know, changes, but um, yeah. Because I think there's also a, a balance between efficiency and quality, right? Like I could crank out auditions super fast, but um, you know, it's finding that balance of spending enough time on it so that it's good enough, but not so much time on it that, like Sion said, there's that law of diminishing returns where it's like at this point, I mean, if I've read it 20 times, take 21 is probably not going to be any better. And it's probably going to be exactly like take two, you know, and eight, you know, so um, it's finding that balance. Um, but then another efficiency thing is, especially if you're auditioning on online casting sites, making sure you're selecting the right auditions to audition for. 